Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to a quick update on LibGDX. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you may remember about a month or two back, um, there was a story about RoboVM. Now, RoboVM is the technology that is used by uh, LibGDX to support iOS development. So if you wanted to make your LibGDX Java application run on iOS, you used RoboVM. And the long and short story of it is, RoboVM was bought by Xamarin. Xamarin was bought by Microsoft. Microsoft put a bullet in RoboVM. Uh, so this all happened uh, April the 15th. So we're going on, well, basically a month ago, and we've been kind of questioning where um, LibGDX stood from that point on. Now, in this point in time, um, Mario from LibGDX gave a number of options. Uh, so basically, those were the different choices you can see right there. If you want to read more about the story, I'll link the original story down below. But suffice to say, um, LibGX was kind of in a tricky spot because the technology they used to support iOS was now in flux. So if you wanted to run your games on iOS and you didn't already have a RoboVM license, you're in trouble. Fortunately, just today, uh, the newest version of LibGDX was launched. LibGDX 1.9.3 was launched, and there's a number of new features in here. So there's more to this release than just iOS. But the great news is the iOS um, support problem is sorted. And even better, unlike before, now we have two technologies to rely on instead of just one. So if one of them goes down the toilet again, there's a backup. And even better, the one option is completely open source again. So that's where we're standing right now. There are these two options supported for LibGDX development on iOS. Uh, one of them is another proprietary technology that's currently somewhat under development in beta, or technology preview is what we're calling it here, uh, by Intel called MultiOS Engine. Uh, this was the default fallback that LibGDX was going with a month ago. Um, it's not ideal, it's tying us to another commercial proprietary piece of software. Um, but it would work, so we weren't completely in the lurch. Well, fortunately, a couple of the people on the LibGDX team went off and forked the code from RoboVM before it went closed source. And they've gone about the effort of actually bringing it up to date. So here we are now. We now have uh, Moby Develops RoboVM fork, and this is now officially supported in LibGDX. Now, there are a few catches. This is not completely up to date, so right now that means there's no... Um, Apple TV support, for example. Some of the things that were added in the last few months of RoboVM development aren't there. Uh, on top, some of the um, RoboPods, which are extensions or plugins to RoboVM, are not yet supported. There are, however, um, the IDEA plugin and the Eclipse plugin from RoboVM have also been ported. So this is awesome. So now we actually have an open source version of RoboVM available again. It's been cleaned up, it's working now. So that brings us to today. When you go to make your LibGDX application, make sure that you go ahead and download the brand new version of the LibGDX project setup tool. Uh, you get this basically if you come in here and go to downloads. When you download the setup app, this is the setup app. And now you'll see there are two options for sub projects. There's iOS, if you select iOS, you get the RoboVM plugin. You get Moby Develops RoboVM fork. However, if you select, da, 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 let me go back, iOS MOE, you instead get the multi OS engine support. So really that's all that's involved now. So if you wanna support either of those platforms, you go ahead and just pick it now in the setup, util setup utility. So the great thing is uh, there's no pending iOS crisis for LibGDX anymore. Uh, there's a nice open source option. Now if you're trying to decide one versus the other, um, this blog post by um, Bad Logic Games, the LibGDX host, uh, has the the pros and cons or contras, the pros and contras of OSF, the open source version of RoboVM versus the multi OS engine. And if I'm honest, I see absolutely no reason to go with multi OS engine over the open source port of RoboVM, unless of course you run into problems. I don't see any reason why you would tie it to the proprietary closed source version when there's an open source and battle tested option out there. Of course, this is under development, so we have to take a wait and see approach to make sure that everything works fine. Uh, but as you can see here from the setup utility, it is available today, up and going. So great work from the um, LibGDX team to get this stuff up and running so fast. Uh, crisis avoided, nothing to worry about here. So we nicely have iOS support on, um, well, on iOS for LibGDX. Excellent news. Uh, so until something weird happens from 
Oracle doing some stupid lawsuit against somebody somewhere down the road. We are having absolutely no issues running our Java applications on iOS anymore, specifically LibGDX apps. Uh, so I thought I'd share that news specifically, go about the explanations. As I said earlier, I will uh, link the story about the death of RoboVM right here in case you want some of the backstory. And I will also link to the uh, blog post on Bad Logic Games, which explains the pros and cons of each technology. Plus, of course, there are other features in this actual release that you should be aware of. There's some cool stuff here, uh, new APIs, uh, API changes, some fixes, etc. Uh, so that's the great news and two new iOS backends for LibGDX, crisis averted, uh, great news all around. Hope you enjoyed that. See you all later.